And now my pull and throttle. I can see that my current voltage is at 11.4, but my minimal voltage dipped down to here. So this is really cool. A lot of the information that's contained within the data logs inside the Castle ESC here, right on the radio. I got something to say, something to say. Hey everybody, how's it going? Our house one way here and welcome to RC Physics. So for those of you new to the channel, RC Physics is all about the science and tech behind our favorite RC hobbies. So today I've got, you know, just a quick instructional video for you. So if you've been watching my feeds, you know that I just got my brand new Radio Master MT12 radio. So this guy is really cool. One of the awesome features about it is that one of the two versions is a four in one, AKA universal radio. So I can use this with radios from the majority of popular RC brands. So in my case, uh, this is my uh, Traxxas Slash uh, Masher, uh, call it Scratch, uh, but I'm running a FlySky four channel a receiver down in here. Um, now there's two formats of FlySky receivers. Um, this one is, I'll, I'll call it the dumb one, um, that uses, see which protocol is this? These use a frequency hopping spread spectrum protocol. So there's two versions of these receivers that are out there. Some support telemetry and some don't. So this one right here is the dumb non-telemetry version. The other one over here, this uses the 2A version, which does support bidirectional telemetry to the radio. So how do I bind this thing? On the radio here, go ahead and power it up. Welcome to Okay. So by default, you're gonna have a a model memory setup. So if you click the model version here, you'll get your list of cars and there'll be one set by default. I think they call it car one. Um, I already want to rename my scratch. So I go in here down to the name, under the setup screen, scroll down and you will see a option where you'll see that there's an internal RF module and there is an external RF module, RF stands for radio frequencies. So basically with this radio, you have an expansion bay, so you can use a radio module that's built into the radio, and it has this really cool antenna up here, or you have a uh, radio module that can be run off the expansion bay. So you actually have a lot of flexibility being able to use multiple protocols on the same radio. So even if you don't have the four in one built in like I do, you can get an expansion module and have a four in one capability. I chose to get the built in four in one module so I can hit a higher power expansion module. That was just my decision as a user, but you're free to make any decision that you like based upon how you like to run your cars. So basically you go up here to the internal module. In my case, I pick multi. Then I can go in and find the right protocol. In this case, it's FS for FlySky 2A RX. So I simply select that. And there are tons in here. So if you want to see, you want to make sure that yours is supported. Oh, that's interesting. FS to a, oh, I can set this up to act like a receiver if I want to do that. I want the FS 2A right here. All right. So in that regard there, then I set it up. So in this case, I'm doing PWN, that's pulse width modulation, standard RC output, and IBUS. That's what allow me to use the FlySky telemetry models. I have a voltage telemetry uh, unit attached to this car. So I do that. And now we're all set. So now I can scroll down and you see it gives me the options for the number of channels that I'm going to be using. So you can set it up to use up to 16 channels. Yeah. You know, so if I really wanted to change that, I could change the channel assignments, but I'm not going to because I don't have to. And then uh, this is important. Every receiver needs to have a unique receiver number. I'm going to leave it zero zero because this is going to be the first one. Computers start counting from zero. And then all I need to do is click bind. So now it's beeping because it wants to set up. So on this side, this is an old style receiver, so I have to use the binding plug. So I've got the plug set up in here. I connect the battery to it. You see I'm using a Venom battery with Castle connectors. Power it up, flip the switch. And now I'm bound. So now I can turn this back off. Remove the binding clip and there you go. I see telemetry lost. So it's not talking. 
I unplugged the telemetry plug just so I had easier access into the radio. I'll plug that back in. It helps if you plug it in the right direction. There we go. Put this guy back on. And now, telemetry is recovered. So I can fit return, go back to the main screen, hit telemetry. And as of right now, oh, my channel assignments are wrong. Okay. So right now I've got steering attached to throttle and throttle attached to steering. Okay. So I could fix this one of two ways. I could swap around the cables on the receiver or I could go into the radio. I'll go into the radio and switch it. So I go, because basically all my cars are gonna be set up in that way. So if I'm gonna be using this as a basis for the radios, I wanna have it consistent. So I'll go into my model setup. Well, I'll turn off the power here. So I'm not just burning that up. All right. So I'll go into my radio setup. So in this channel, on this radio, you define inputs and a mixer and an output. So in my case, all I need to do is you, the inputs are what you put on the radio. So all your, all your controls that just gets assigned to a variable that you see right here. Then you switch to the mixer that then tells which variable is attached to which channel. In this case, um, it's got throttle as being channel one and steering being channel two. You know what? I think all my radios are set up the flip side of that. It kind of doesn't matter. So I could just swap it. You know what, I'm, I'm just to demonstrate the radio, I'll go ahead and I'll switch it here. So I'll just go into the mixer. So long press, hit edit, all right? So see channel one, source is throttle. I'll just click on this and I just adjust what I want. So now that's steering. Okay, let's go back out. And now channel two, long press, hit edit. And I'll change the source, little I stands for input. I'll change that to throttle. There we go. Now, if now it, while I'm in here, if I want to do other funky things, like if I wanted to combine channels or, if you, or you have a, a slave channel so that if I hit the throttle, it deploys an air brake or some other crazy feature. If I had a mechanical brake, uh, I, I could set all that up using a mix. But now I just back out. There we go. And now I'm all saved. So let me turn the radio back on. We hear the beeps. See telemetry recovered. Now I turn the steering and it works. But the other feature, the other issue I see is the channels are reversed. So if I turn it right, it's turning left. So now I go back into the, now I'll go over here to the outputs. And since I have here, I can see when I'm turning, steering channel one, that's not right. So I click on that, edit, and I go in direction invert. So let's not invert that. Let's go back out. And now it's turning the right direction. Now let me verify the throttle. It's like four. Reverse. There we go. So now this model is set. Oh, and one very important thing I forgot to mention, set up your channel fail safe. So basically, when you go to your model, go here to the model setup, setup screen, and scroll down past the individual receiver settings, you will get to fail safe. So what you want to do is a fail safe is what happens if you lose contact with your model. So in my case, I'm going to custom, but I mean, you have options of custom, uh, receiver settings, no pulses, which basically it just stops sending any information. And then, um, hold where it just stays the last settings for a surface application you don't want hold because it would just keep going forever 
So basically, let you or not set where you just choose not to have a fail safe. For surface application, the safest things are either to go to no pulses or to go into custom and set a custom value. In my case, I'm setting it for the two channels that are, for the only two channels that are working for this model, one and two, the throttle and the steering, it just goes to neutral. So the car just goes dead until it picks up signal again. So I got that, I got it set, and we're good to go. So make sure you do this setting so that if you do lose radio contact, your model's not gonna do something strange and unexpected. So if I just want basic functionality, that's all I need, but I'm not basic. So let's go ahead and let's do the other things that I wanna do, and that is to go ahead and set up telemetry. Okay guys, so to show you the process of setting up a new sensor uh, from out of the box, I'm just, I went ahead and deleted all my telemetry and I'm gonna redo it for you. So starting back to, going back to the main screen. So here's where we start off. So if I hit the model button, go into model select, make sure I'm on the right model. That's the one with the star. So you see I have scratch selected right there. So I go ahead and hit the page button 10 times. To bring me over to page 10, that's the telemetry screen. So here I go to discover new. So click that. And now we see that I've got a1, which is my BC. Uh, I've got a collection of radio link quality metrics right here. So uh, depending on how you like to look at it, I've got link quality at 100%, RSSI, uh, signal to noise, and then down at the bottom, I have my actual pack voltage. So for this radio, what I really care about is the pack voltage and what my link quality is. So here I have them both, then stop. And now I can scroll down and I can adjust alarms for link quality. So this is yell at me, the pace based upon how strong my radio strength is. And that's pretty much it. And I also have the ability to set up a variometer. That's an airplane thing, basically for glider pilots or people who are doing soaring, it uses a an altitude sensor, it usually is a barometer and it will like beep at you going up and down in tone based upon how high your airplane is. Not applicable for what we're doing, but it's kind of interesting that it's in there. So now I can go back, go back again, and now I can set up my telemetry screens. So here you can see that if I just hit the telemetry screen, I'm showing my battery voltage, I have my timers, and then um, also my link quality. So I'm pretty much good to go if that's all I want to do. But if I want to add a little bit more, I can go back, hit exit. I can go back down in here. And the very last screen is displays. So if I want to add something else to the screen, I can, let's say I want to add a one to it, which is, well, what is this? This is just, I think that's just showing that I have a link. So let's just go ahead and add a one. So I can basically display any information that the radio has in it. So I can put my inputs. I can do um, my uh, outputs going to radio. I can put alarms. I can, I can put anything that the radio, any information that the radio has, including logical variables that you can use for programming. We're not gonna worry about all that there. But if I just scroll down, here's the telemetry. So you have A1 negative, A1 positive. That means the minimum and the maximum levels. I have RQ that I can list. So I, I'm just gonna hit A1. But I'm also going to do is add, again, just run back onto the bottom. I'm going to include A3 negative. What that's gonna do is show me the lowest voltage that the battery pack has gone to while I'm running. And I think that's all I want right now. So now if I just go back here, now I see I've got A3 and I have A3 negative. So for most people, you kind of don't care, but if I'm doing speed runs, for example, I might want to see what the minimum voltage that the pack has gone out to while I'm going. So if I click the throttle here, there we go. Now you see that the battery is dipped down to there. Now, something very interesting has popped up here that didn't go very fast. So what I'm gonna to have to do now from the radio side is recalibrate the radio. So that's really simple. I just turn it off. 
you hear telemetry lost. And for the castles, all I have to do is squeeze my throttle, turn it on. So now I'm in calibration mode. So I go full negative. And I go back to neutral. And I'm programmed, I'm recalibrated. So if I click throttle again, now I have much more voltage. And so here I just screwed up. The battery cables connected to my sensor just popped out. So I'm gonna reset that so I can actually do this. I can reset the telemetry. So now I'm back to scratch from where I was. And now I pull the throttle. I can see that my current voltage is at 11.4, but my minimal voltage dipped down to here. So this is really cool information, especially if you're racing or speed running, you can see what your battery is doing in the run. So you can know a lot of the information that's contained within the data logs inside the Castle ESC here, right on the radio. So this can work with me so I can tune my runs. So it's pretty cool stuff. So stay tuned, there's gonna be a lot more coming up on how you can set this radio up to work with how you wanna use your RC fleet. Um, I'm going to be uh, evaluating a few things. I'm gonna be checking out really what the range is of these Fly Sky receivers. I've never had a problem with the Fly Skies as far as losing contact, but I haven't used the Fly Sky receivers for some of the crazy distances that some of the guys I know have for setting up their runs. So again, my overall plan is to use Express RLRS when it comes to um, the speed running. So I know I have unlimited capability. Um, and those Express RLRS receivers also have some really cool things such as a built-in voltage sensor. So I don't have to run these external voltage sensors like I'm doing right now. So I, more information, more cool stuff coming in. Our Health 21 signing out. Remember the mantra, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, and do it all over again. So don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and all the other sources, and stay tuned. Lots more cool stuff coming on with this radio, with the fleet, and just, we're gonna have some fun here. All right, guys, our house 21 signing out, peace.